The AstraZeneca vaccine has been branded defective in a landmark UK legal case. Does that mean we're going to have many more legal cases now and that perhaps these medical products were rushed to market without sufficient investigation and clinical trialling? <laughs> Hello there, you Awakening Wonders. Thanks for joining me on our mutual voyage to truth, freedom and awakening together. In spite of the fact that it sometimes seems impossible, oppressive, dangerous and deadly to speak freely, to think critically, to communicate openly, to challenge power, I believe we're closer now than ever. Steal yourself. Be ready to go across the breach into new revelatory territories because truth of a few years ago is just fallen apart, has fallen away. The scales have been lifted. Remember, hey, if you don't take this vaccine, Hey, you better take this medication. People that don't, they should be ashamed. The people who are not getting vaccines, who are believing the lies on the internet instead of science, it's time to start shaming them. What else? Or leave them behind. Well, the legal cases have started now. AstraZeneca, oh no, we made critical errors in introducing and in fact, in many cases, mandating medications. Now, a lot of people just will close their ears and their eyes to this because the delirium is too sweet to release. But the truth is coming out. Let's get into it. The first thing we'll look at is a piece of mm, propaganda from the British establishment, the BBC, revealing for the first time that there were problems, that there was clotting being caused by AstraZeneca. This is way back in 2021. Remember those days? Let's have a look at that now. And the WHO, curiously, still maintaining that there's no problem with it. Very odd. The biggest member states of the European Union have now joined the list of nations questioning the performance of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine. Germany, France, Spain and Italy are all taking the precautionary measure of suspending use of the vaccine because of fears about possible side effects, including blood clots. There's a precaution. We're just going to withdraw this. Look at how the language has altered and has been altering. This COVID inquiry that's happening in the UK would not be happening if independent media voices, and I mean yours actually, had not at the beginning gone, whoa, 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 whoa. what's going on here? All Jay Bhattacharya, Robert Malone, Peter McCulloch, Dave Meyer, in Judy Miss, all these people that were just, you crackpots, shut up, that is misinformation. Okay, well now people are getting paid out because of this stuff. Is it misinformation or was it something that should always, always have been looked at critically, openly? Is this ever a subject that should have been subject to censure and control? Shouldn't this have been openly discussed from the beginning? Isn't that obvious common sense that with something of this scale granting that much power to potential exploitative forces, whether they're governmental or private, is ridiculous and dangerous? Well, now we have a verdict. It is. The AstraZeneca vaccine has already been suspended in the Netherlands, Ireland, Iceland, Bulgaria, Denmark and Norway. Oh, those guys. Let's make sure we pay close attention to what they say. Now, the World Health Organization, along with the EU's very own medicines regulator, say that there is no justification for this temporary ban. They would say that, wouldn't they? Because they've got a weird set of agenda, those guys. It's very unusual the way that they think. It's very unusual the way that they're funded. Given that the word health is pretty prominent in their title, you would think that their conduct would be a little different. And leading British scientists insist that the vaccine is safe. OK, so that's 2021. Now let's have a look at some of the legacy media reporting on this subject from today. There isn't any. You can't find a single legacy media outlet telling you, oh, by the way, there's been a payout. I wonder why that will be. Isn't it interesting? The stories they really focus a lot of resources on and the stories they just kind of ignore. Is there any corollary? Is there any theme? Is there any trajectory? The only way we can bring you an update on this story is with the often banned, derided and YouTube strike receiving online commentator, a friend of the show, John Campbell. Take it away, John. Is a landmark legal case. Oxford for AstraZeneca COVID jab was defective, is the contention. 8th of November 2023, quite a few outlets. Um, Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine has been branded as defective. Um, claims of efficacy were vastly vastly overstated and as we'll see they vastly overstated its efficacy and the media vastly overstated it with them and even when it was revealed there were problems they tried to mitigate that the world health organization still say it's okay isn't it curious how they operate uh, th this is in fact th the case uh, you could argue it was very va vastly overstated in other words, it didn't quite have in the vial what it said on the, on the tin is what this is arguing. Defective. This is the uh, the way they're trying to get round the 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 indemnity that government gave them. 
but the government's going to probably end up paying for this. It's going to cost you and me a fortune. Oh, well, no problem. It's going to be the taxpayers that will end up footing the bill for this travesty. Same way that we paid for the development and release of most of the products themselves, even though the profits found their way to, oh yeah, Moderna and Pfizer. I wonder who invests in those products. Let's get into this, guys. The AstraZeneca vaccine caused a small group of individuals to suffer catastrophic injury and bereavement. To make this statement is not to dabble in anti-vaccine conspiracy theories, which, I mean, what do you mean by anti-vaccine conspiracy theory at this point? You have to describe what you mean is an anti-vaccine conspiracy theory. You're against it because of a conspiracy. A cons- but, uh, <laughs> this is a fact evidenced by the reports of clinicians, medical experts and coroners across the UK. Clinicians, medical experts and coroners, not crackpots, nut jobs and conspiracy theorists. For those who want to maintain a narrative that vaccines do no harm, the experience of the vaccine injured and bereaved constitutes an inconvenient truth. No, they should be shamed. I was told. The legacy media told me what to do with the anti-vaxxers. Shame them. Why don't we shame these bereaved people? That we can maybe shame them into silence. And anyone who tries to propagate these ideas will just find some reason they shouldn't be able to speak either. I'm sure we can come up with something. This is a truth that to date has been easier for the government and much of the media to ignore. By beginning a legal battle against AstraZeneca, the vaccine injured and bereaved can no longer be silenced. Damn! The Oxford AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine has been branded defective in a multi-million pound landmark legal action that will suggest claims over its efficacy were vastly overstated. Not only were they vastly overstated, those claims were amplified by the media and people that tried to challenge these vastly overstated claims were shamed and silenced and still to this day, there are consequences for speaking out in this way. The pharmaceutical giant is being sued in the High Court in a test case by Jamie Scott, a father of two who suffered a significant permanent brain injury that's left him unable to work as a result of a blood clot after receiving the jab in April 2021. A second claim is being brought by the widower and two young children of 35-year-old Alpa Taylor who died after having the jab made by AstraZeneca, the UK-based pharmaceutical giant. It's interesting this man received the jab in April 2021 when it had been revealed that the AstraZeneca vaccine caused blood clots but the WHO was still saying it was okay. If they want to introduce a global treaty that means they'll be able to mandate vaccines across the world and censor opposition to those measures, we should definitely all sign up to that right now and definitely not sign this petition in the link below that would prevent that mad treaty. The test cases could pave the way for as many as 80 damages claims worth an estimated $80 million over a new condition known as vaccine-induced immune thrombocytopenia. It's catchy. And thrombosis, VITT. That was identified by specialists in the wake of the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine rollout. The vaccine, which was heralded at its launch by Boris Johnson as a triumph for British science, is no longer used in the UK. The government recommends three other vaccines for its autumn booster programme. Let's not ask any questions about those then. And the idea that it's like just Boris Johnson rather than a coordinated global event to which every political party signed up is ridiculous and convenient. What this is trying to suggest is, well, if you just get rid of Boris Johnson and AstraZeneca, there, there's the problem solved. It's not as if there was a global campaign to prevent you from thinking or saying or daring to believe anything else. In the months following the rollout, the potential serious side effect of the AstraZeneca jab was identified by scientists. Following this, it was recommended it no longer be given to the under 40 in the UK because the risk of receiving the jab outweighed the harm posed by COVID. AstraZeneca last night told The Telegraph that patient safety was its highest priority. Is it though? Or is profit the highest priority? And is patient safety a sort of byproduct, an inadvertent consequence of the pursuit of this profit? Official figures from the Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency, MHRA, show at least 81 deaths in the UK are suspected to have been linked to the adverse reaction that caused clotting in people who also had low blood platelets. Oh, comorbidities is okay now. In total, almost one in five people who suffered from the condition died as a result, according to the MHRA's own figures. That's their figures. Official figures obtained under a Freedom of Information request show that out of 148 payouts made by the government under the Vaccine Damage Payment Scheme, which provides compensation to those injured by vaccines or to bereaved nicks of kin, at least 144 went to recipients of the AstraZeneca vaccine. Fewer than five people under the scheme received vaccines other than AstraZeneca. Is it me? Or does the future feel more insecure and uncertain? Wars, pandemics, lies, trickery. My cats keep having kittens. The last one's personal. For those who are in the United States, there is a way to secure your hard-earned nest egg. American Hartford Gold make it easy to protect your savings and retirement accounts with physical gold and silver. With one phone call, they can have physical gold and silver delivered right to your door. 
or inside a qualifying retirement account like your IRA or 401k. American Hartford Gold is the highest rated firm in the US with an A plus rating from the BBB and thousands of satisfied clients. Right now, they will give you up to $5,000 of free silver on your first qualifying order. This offer is only for US customers. Call 866-505-8315. That's 866-505-8315. 505-8315 or simply text BRAND to 998899. Get up to $5,000 of silver and protect your future in this crazy, crazy world with some solid precious metals literally made in stars. The claim is being brought by Mr. Scott under the Consumer Protection Act 1987 and argues that AstraZeneca's vaccine was defective in that it was not as safe as individuals were entitled to expect. The case will raise questions about what the UK authorities knew about concerns over the vaccine and how they were handled. An examination of WhatsApp messages sent by or to Matt Hancock, the then health secretary obtained by the Telegraph as part of the lockdown files and which have been passed to the COVID public inquiry, suggests concerns were aired by US authorities. AstraZeneca never in the end applied for a license in the US. At the time, a number of European countries were pausing the vaccine rollout over fears it caused clotting in some people. I suppose what will take place now is an attempt to minimise and mitigate the impact of this information and make it like this is an anomalous outcome. Outlier. This is not some institutional thing that went on. The COVID inquiry in our country, which would not be happening without the actions, I would say, of independent media and people that were brave enough to speak out during the propaganda campaign that was fully immersive, pressurising and shaming of people that dared to have another view. What will happen now is, oh, there was a few bad actors, this vaccine didn't work and this politician was a bit inept. This was systemic. This was coordinated. This was a global event. We're all going to have to collectively forget that there was an advertising campaign, that there was public shaming, that there were shows where vaccines danced about on the TV. Where almost everyone you know anecdotally would say, yeah, I, this thing happened to me and I know this person that had this happen. And morticians contributing. Why would you need to censor and control the conversation unless there was something to suppress and control? Let me know in the chat in the comments. Well, you can. The legal action will also examine the role of the government in reassuring the public after Matt Hancock authorised an indemnity for AstraZeneca in the very unexpected event of any adverse reactions that could not have been foreseen through the robust checks and procedures that have been put in place. But we better give them in indemnity anyway. If their measures have been so robust, what's the requirement for the indemnity? So while AstraZeneca didn't apply for a license in the US, European nations were stopping using it, Britain was granting indemnity, even though there was plainly some fear that it caused blood clotting. This is an international travesty, and I think it's just the beginning. Lawyers point out in the legal claim that Mr. Hancock, in an accompanying departmental minute, said, the data so far on this vaccine suggests there will be no adverse reactions and so no liability. Writing for The Telegraph, Sarah Moore, partner at Housefield, the law firm bringing the claim, says, The group of individuals whom we represent have always been clear. They do not dabble in anti-vaccine conspiracy theories. However, it is plainly factually inaccurate to claim that vaccines do no harm, given the experience of our client group, the vaccine injured and bereaved. They still have to sort of distance themselves from vaccine conspiracy. But what does that constitute at this time? That term was invented to prevent people from asking questions and having a legitimate conversation about a pretty unique event. There's no conspiracy theory beyond that. There are, of course, like in any subject, people that have views that are on a spectrum of extremity, but you can't use that to delegitimize the skepticism that accompanied a unique global event that was, let me say it again, exploited to introduce regulations and legislation that would never have been accepted otherwise, normalize the idea of censorship, normalize the idea of mass compliance, create incredible profits for Pfizer and Moderna and other companies with some pretty interesting ties to very powerful figures in the US government government and UK government, as well as creating a general climate of compliance and normalising the control of a population. Now, I suppose it gets into conspiracy theory when you start to contemplate how that might be used or misused in the future, but it's no longer a conspiracy theory in the same sense that some unfounded and absurd proposition could be put forward without any evidence at all. That's not a conspiracy theory. The idea of anti-vax rhetoric now has to be paused and parked, like the AstraZeneca vaccine should have been, and if it had been, there'd be some people 
people that are dead now that would be alive. So Jeremy Wright Casey, the former Attorney General, urged the government to step in and settle the legal claims before they came to court, given that ministers had indemnified AstraZeneca. So Jeremy, who has raised the case of Mr Scott, who is one of his constituents with Rishi Sunak, said, It's very, very strange the government has not come up with a way to settle these cases where the cause is clear. I don't get it from a professional point of view or from the political point of view because of the damage done if these cases are not settled quickly. And the damage is, of course, that people begin to recognise that there were some appalling decisions made in the last couple of years. People rode roughshod over democracy, over human rights, over enshrined principles. And that, again, being normalised everywhere now. We don't have due procedure. We don't have those ideas anymore. What we do is we have a centralised authoritarian message that's amplified by the legacy media. And if a few people get blood clots along the way, that's just a necessary byproduct of this agenda. So Jeremy added, there's no sense of urgency on this. There's no realisation in the government that this is an impending problem. The PM told me he would find out more about it and come back to me. None of us can be confident we won't have to go through all of this again one day. And if we do, the confidence in mass vaccination needs to be in place. How can it be? How can it possibly be after this? That almost sort of sounds like a threat, doesn't it? Like, you know, we're going to definitely need mass vaccination. And how can we have confidence in mass vaccination? Well, we can't have confidence in mass vaccination because of everything we've learned. This is in the mainstream now because it's going through legal and official channels and there's a COVID inquiry. But if you're aware of the broader narrative around vaccines and around the measures taken around vaccines, the way they were introduced, the undemocratic nature of them, you're aware that this is just the tip of the iceberg. This is just a small part of an enormous and extraordinary story that requires a reckoning that ultimately leaves us in a situation where we cannot trust the government, cannot trust the legacy media, cannot trust Big Pharma, cannot trust the bodies that are supposed to regulate them, can't trust individuals within Parliament, can't trust Parliament itself, can't trust individuals in Congress, can't trust the system of Congress. It leads you to not a bleak appraisal, but a necessary scepticism to systemic power. The COVID pandemic was in one way unique, but what it revealed was not unique. What it revealed was the convergence of interests in media, big tech, big pharma and government and how those things operate if a crisis affords it. You don't need to believe in conspiracies. You just need to now look at the last few years, see what happened. And this is merely one piece of evidence that allows you to reassess the entire last three years with a degree of clarity that the mainstream media still wouldn't afford you. They're still not reporting on this, for example. During an attempt to mandate jabs on NHS staff, some health and social care workers with a principled objection to being told what to do with their bodies by the government would be forced out of their jobs. All the while, individuals and organisations with genuine concerns about aspects of vaccination policy were smeared and silenced in a disgraceful state-sponsored campaign to suppress vaccine safety and efficacy-related debate. Have they acknowledged that yet? Or have they simply continued with it, tried to prevaricate, tried to pretend this is just a minor issue, and tried to control dissent wherever possible using some of the most unspeakable means? The victims had the vaccination out of a sense of duty. It felt the right thing to do to help Britain out of the pandemic and to prevent more vulnerable people being made ill by stopping transmission of the virus but the result for them and their families has been catastrophic. And it doesn't stop transmission either. The entire thing has been a fiasco, a fallacy, and an almost unprecedented global lie. Many have been left wondering why they bothered those that are still alive. Because this doesn't get into excess deaths, this story. Doesn't get into the phenomena of excess deaths, because that's still on the side of the line that this used to be. That's still there. When the WHO, you saw it on the BBC, went, it's actually fine, excess deaths still lives in that territory. Soon, one day, unless for some reason independent media was really attacked and independent voices were dissented and shut down and silenced, and I don't see any evidence of that happening. Do you see any evidence of that happening anywhere? Then excess deaths will move into this portion. And you'll, in the end, get legit KCs and proper lawyers and people looking for payouts going, whoa, wait a second, that's not normal that this healthy athlete dropped dead from a heart attack. That's not normal that these young people died. 60,000 excess deaths in the United States in 2021 and 2022. That's not normal. That will have to come into the fray for contemplation and consideration at some time. They'll resist it for as long as possible. They'll try and control it. But as with the AstraZeneca case, in the end, it will have to come out. A World Health Organization report in June 2022 was unclear about whether the vaccine stopped transmission of the virus. No substantive data are available related to the impact of vaccine on transmission or viral shedding, states the report in relation to AstraZeneca. So in June 2022, they knew there was no substantive data. Of course, now we know a lot more about it. The World Health Organization seems to have an agenda beyond world health. They are quite well organised though, so at least one word in their name is sort of true. Lawyers claim that the vaccine was less safe than the public was led to expect. Let me know in the comments if you agree with that. Should the courts agree, the damages in compensation are likely to be huge. One lesson to be learned is that young healthy people should not have been forced through restrictions on their movements to be vaccinated against a disease that hardly affected them. Do you think so? Well, 
There you are. In a sense, the entire narrative is beginning to crack. Would this narrative have cracked were it not for voices like John Campbell and other voices contributing to this conversation? Remember at the height of this pandemic when Joe Rogan dared to take ivermectin that there was a global attack on him that seemed coordinated. The media appears to be able to behave like one unit, like a swarm of insects or like geese flying in formation when it comes to amplifying the message of the powerful. Similarly, they have a power to shut down dissenting voices. Now these court cases have begun. It's likely there'll be a small portion of justice, just as much as they can manage. Still excess deaths have to be dealt with. Still the consequences of lockdown. The people whose cancers were exacerbated, heart disease were exacerbated, myocarditis, pericarditis, the impact on young people and children, the economy, business, it's all so much to be considered. A reckoning that is unlikely to take place unless independent media voices are able to continue to speak openly and freely on these subjects. Here are the numbers of ways that's likely to be stopped. The WHO have got a treaty that has a censorship proposal in it. Legislation's been passed all over the world to stop independent media being able to speak on big tech platforms because the big tech platforms themselves will be controlled and censored. And of course, dissenting voices are regularly, routinely attacked to a staggering degree. We have to unite. We have to stand up against this. We have to realise that the truth is coming out. But that's just what I think. Why don't you let me know what you think in the chat. If you enjoyed this video, have a look at either of these. But join us every day on Rumble where we speak freely about this stuff, where we bring on guests that can tell you stuff like Dave Martin that will blow your mind about what's been going on. But more important than any of that is if you can, please stay free. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to see more uncensored content where free speech can flourish, join our live stream. Click the link right here to watch the next video if you want to, or become a member of a growing movement. Download the Rumble app and you'll be informed every time we make a new piece of content. Stay free.